introduce someone that I take tremendous pride in that I heard and he absolutely blew my socks off. I think he's a genius. I wish he would speak louder. He's a very, very fine poet. Many of us have been privileged to witness his work. Michael Rose. Good evening. That was very kind. I will try to project. What say? Try to. I will try to project. Seals, seals uh, what needs to be said on those matters. This is called The Poet and the Dreamer. And it's in need of editing. <laughs> I dreamed that I was a philosopher. I saw the galaxy in a grain of sand and followed the question into the midnight of the morning rain. I followed my thoughts, one by one, into the abyss of rain and turned like a gear between gears. I watched. I prayed. I solved problems, riddles, and broke them like pieces of string. And so much time lapsed that I could not count the strings and I could not love the palace that was philosophy. Nor could I transmit the infinite eyes of God to the fool of God's world. I am a poet. I shout this beyond the stars and moons. In the light of the sun, before the moon, I romanticize the black night and sing of love and woman and God. Brahman, let him rest his eyes in me, for it is said that he has dreamed of me after all. Sweet Brahman, I love the souls of your souls. Do you not know we dream of each other? I am a poet, a rhythmic prophecy, a misty-eyed sleep. I am a cloud on top of cloud, in Mount Sinai thunders black so that I might teach Moses of stars beyond the horizon of human hands struck out into the blue ceiling sky. I am the ceiling, I am the sword of blue and yellow light piercing through the matter of human touch. I am beyond an image. I am imagination meeting black hole, and I am the halo of light that beats its hallowed lights like wings from holes in the universe. I am a thread. I connect. I am not a philosopher. Rather, I am a thread of words reverberating out to the sky of birds swirling in the vortex of the arc of perfect arcs. I am an eagle. How can I not be? I am a philosopher, I am a poet, I am a mouse. Between the woods, between the brambles, between the briars, between the lush, I am all things. I am free words expanding out into the pond of nonsense thought, the ocean of salt rolling into the geysers of the sea, carving the volcanic towers in the ocean and cleaning out the wounds of feet that have been cut from the walk on earth, that steals nonsense from our hearts and makes us into blank lines in a singular dimension, dimensionless, realityless, hopeless. I am not a philosopher. I can never be, for what is a philosopher but a rhythm? I am not a self, as the Buddhists suggest. Because what is this self but a rhythm? 
I am not in control of my words, for I am in a jungle of diamonds that architect my bones and hands. My skeleton is the closest poetic metaphysic of me, because it presumes nothing and stands only as a single frame of me, like a moment in a flame's life, and hence is no more than a shape. I am a poet, because poetics is the only free truth that ever met the earth and stood forever, feetless. I dreamed I was a philosopher, but I couldn't be because I was a rhythm without shape, naked and without shame. Read something a little shorter. It's called The Rattles. Life is rattling. Tin cans drag behind the marriages of a thousand lives to the beating song of life. I went to um, Seattle, Washington, and I wrote a poem there several years ago. So it's called Washington. Plum orange trees adorn roadsides. The sidewalks are white. The water is clean. This, this is Washington. The rivers ship their gold. Their azure blue cold out to Shiva's concave rib bone. This, the Shiva of the West. The lakes open for the swimming fish, and it is October and day. Fertility resides in this burbling water underneath the bridges, near the lumpy logs and turbid rock beds. Its seedlings are everywhere. Trees are singing in a happy tree time. People are murmuring their murmurs. Women are floating, leaves loving. Here in fall, the colors call corn and flowers into the world to die, and moist winter waits, always in the wind's wine. Chimes reside inside the fluting ochre throat of her, and beat leaves from the stooping branches, near the woodsides and yellow lines of roadways. And now the time is sublime, so they bellow a deep and colorful moan the shape of a brown earthquake in tone. And I suppose I will conclude with a poem called Infinity. It's not one of my favorites, but it's always good to think and talk about or read about. It travels outward up into rivers and into the shadows of hard dreams. It billows down alleyways and meets me in the couches of coffee shops beneath an orchestra of fans that spit, that spin in an oddest synchronicity. It does. It meets me at the border of myself before the eyes of God and laughs in insectual cooling of the night. It loves me in doubt and billows in the treacherous deeps of a chest of heat. It loves me in the corners of a room. And in the cobwebs of, in, <laughs> and in the, cobwebs of the world, in a hollow clunk, it calls to me. Through the northern currents, beneath the southern slopes, it calls to me. It calls to me, it calls to me. Its breath as ancient as the seas, and I weep. I weep and speak, but do not have words that keep for it its name, that are keepers of the heart of the sea. At what point do I dissolve on a page and meet the unmeetable eye? At what point am I wrapped in the mystery of love? At what point, at what point? At what point does this poem end or does it carry off oddly into infinity? If it does, I am the infinity of all infinities. 
I am the atman of rain by what drizzles down a page and builds rivers in the sinews of its hard bones. I have one more of this time. Sure, This has no name. I named it HKJH once. I love the sound of your voice. It sounds to me like a baby whale cooing into ocean currents for its mother. Your voice is soft like that. Your laugh is abrupt. It hears itself and always hides in the shadows behind the moon. It always bears your thoughts sunk in sweet yellow currents, soft and delicate but heard. I hear what you cannot, your heart beating two by two, your breath on my hair beneath my scalp, your hands like porcelain glass, sides the curves of blue earth, back like honey. I hear the parts of you with my hands too. For beauty, it is said, has no eyes. <laughs> 